that you're having an amazing morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you're at. And I'm just so excited to share with you guys what I'm currently reading, what I recently have read, and what I plan on reading. So this is just the update of all updates, you know? <laughs> First and foremost, I really missed reading nonfiction. I kind of got burnt out on it a little bit because in March, I believe, I read around like 10-ish 
nonfiction books and I was like yeah I'm done with nonfiction but I kind of started to miss it again so I re picked up 1491 by Charles C. Mann and this book is just all about new revelations of the Americas before Columbus and basically it's kind of a combination of recent scholarship on the Americas and the cultures that were here before Europeans. I am about a hundred, wow I'm literally a hundred pages in so that's cool. So far I'm really enjoying this writing. I definitely think it is very easy to get into, especially if you're new to historical writing or nonfiction writing in general. This is definitely an easier one to pick up. And I love how he has just done all the research himself and combined it into this little book here. So it makes learning about the Western Hemisphere a lot easier. I've been annotating this a lot as I have been really enjoying it and really enjoying the information. I don't think I did have the right expectations going into this because I originally thought it was going to focus solely on the people who were here and the ancient civilizations, things like that but it also does include a lot about Europeans and I think the reason for that is because unfortunately a lot of our information about the past comes from mostly Spanish documentation kind of a bit or at least so far what I've read that has been the case. I've also been reading Peter Pan which is just a story most people already know about so I'm not going to waste y'all's time talking about it but I have been having such an amazing time reading this. Well I'm about halfway through and I was having such an amazing time reading this until about chapter five and that's really where the racist and sexist remarks kind of started and they have persisted throughout this which is just highly unfortunate and terrible. I felt like I knew going into this that this book would feature beliefs and language that I just don't agree with because of how old the story is. I believe this was published in like 1911 and also because I've seen the movies and I know what the movies hold and so I'm not surprised but it just it really does suck when a book that is just so magical and has such a great storyline is bogged down by the rhetoric that is used. So that's very unfortunate. I have been enjoying annotating this. I've been focusing on moments that make me laugh out loud because there have been quite a few of those. I've also been focusing on Peter's characteristics and how the author chooses to portray him. So I thought that was another interesting aspect to this as well. I've been listening to the soundtracks to the original Disney animated film and then the 2003, I think it was, that, yeah, 2003 live action, which just adds a whole another level to the storytelling because it creates a very nostalgic feeling. It also creates Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We don't have to keep talking about this. I'm 50% into it. I think I'm actually, yeah, I'm on like chapter eight or nine. This edition is the Starscape edition illustrated by Charles Vess. And I must say the artwork in this is quite frankly gorgeous. I've very much enjoyed it. Very, very lovely. All right, and I recently picked up Utsubora, I hope I'm saying that correctly, Utsubora by Asumiko Nakamura. This is a horror manga and if you've ever watched an indie artsy kind of horror movie, that is exactly what this feels like. It was kind of a wild ride. I honestly suggest going into it with little to no information because I think that the summary on the back kind of didn't really explain it that well. Do keep in mind that this has very explicit content, definitely 18 and up, but the artwork is just absolutely beautiful. This is the type of story that just gets under your skin and just sits right there and is just very unsettling and not pleasant. But at the same time, you can't help but enjoy the story and the artwork. Again, if you guys have ever watched an indie, artsy, 
horror movie this is what that feels like found this one playlist titled pov you're in a horror movie while reading this i was listening to that playlist and it just again added a whole nother level y'all start curating your reading and your lives to music finished the last volume of perfect world volume 12. this volume almost made me cry no joke this was just such an amazing end to such an amazing cute romance series that follow the trials and tribulations of the two main characters in just such a magical way to where everything has so much meaning but it's also light-hearted and beautiful i almost forgot to mention that i did borrow a digital copy of lock every door by riley sager from my library which is an adult horror not horror why do i always struggle with that word horror mystery thriller type of book and within this book there is this really old very weird building in manhattan called the bartholomew and basically only the super elite and super rich live there well our main character is offered a position to stay and house sit more like apartment sit one of the units and she's gonna be paid a lot of money to do this so she agrees like that you know and then things are just not as they seem and it's very scary very dangerous i think i'm about 70 percent of my way through it i'm having a good time while reading it but nothing is gonna like stick with me forever so it's kind of sitting middle of the road i do want to see how it ends though i very very much do want to see how it ends the only thing i plan on picking up for now is the liminal zone by junji ito which i discussed in my last vlog again i'm super excited to give him another go i love his artwork a lot and something about the design of this cover and this book called out to me so i got it and i'm excited to jump into this so yeah i want to get into that and i want to finish peter pan and you know of course watch tv watch movies listen to great music the usual the usual and i'll talk to you guys in a bit
That movie is still very much iconic to me, very much.
guys do i have some updates for you yeah i do that was terrible okay <laughs> i'm never gonna try that as an introduction type thing ever again but i definitely do have some updates on my reading to share with you guys so let's just jump kind of into it i guess i finished the liminal zone by junji ito and oh my gosh this really surprised me it shocked me and i really really enjoyed it i had such an amazing time reading this especially the second story which was madonna and the fourth story which was slumber those two stories really stick out to me and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed them. I think the storytelling in this was much better than a lot of his other works. And when I read the afterword, he talked about how he was given more freedom regarding page count. And I think that really, really helped him be able to develop the stories in a way that he wanted or in a way that just flowed better. I would even go as far to say that this is my second favorite thing from him ever. And the first being his cat diary, which also if you haven't read that, I highly, highly suggest it. It is so adorable and um, it made me cry. Well, like a tear or two came out. But yeah, I highly, highly, highly suggest reading that. And this also very good. I very much enjoyed it. As I've said, yes, thank you. <laughs> Okay, and I also finished Peter Pan, which in the end, I think this is a story that can definitely be analyzed or explored very deeply. I can also admit that the author is pretty good with his sentence structures and his descriptions. For example, one of my favorite descriptions from this book that really, really sticks out to me is when he's describing the Jolly Roger, and I can just read it out loud. One green light squinting over Kid's Creek which is near the mouth of the pirate river marked where the brig, the Jolly Roger, lay. Low in the water, a rakish-looking craft foul to the hole, every beam in her detestable, like ground strewn with mangled feathers. She was the cannibal of the sea and scarce needed that watchful eye, for she floated immune in the horror of her name. Excuse me, that is very much an amazing description. But then... If you turn the page, he has the indigenous or native people referring to Peter as the Great White Father. <sighs> so very much disgusting. And then Wendy's entire character is just there to be a mother. That's like her one thing is that she's just a mother and she likes to clean and take care of kids. So no, I definitely would not recommend this book, especially to children. Okay, I also finished, what is the title? The title is escaping me. Oh, yeah, I also finished Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I enjoyed it. I think I ended up giving it three stars, so it's nothing super rememberable. I saw a review on Goodreads that referred to it as like popcorn reading, like you keep eating the popcorn, but it's like nothing substantial, nothing nutritious. And that very much applies to this book. Entertaining, fast paced, mediocre kind of writing. In the end, a forgetful story. But I definitely do agree that rich people are terrifying. Okay, and I did not finish 1491, but I made it, a, I think, like 50-ish more pages. Let's see. Now I'm on part two, chapter five, which is page 155. So I made it 55 more pages into this, which I would say is nice because there's so much information in this and I am very much annotating it. I would say I'm annotating it very deeply, but that could all depend on who you are as a person or your annotation system. I'm definitely still enjoying this and I will still be continuing to read this. Yeah. Y'all, I think that this vlog was super fun to film first off and I've already started editing it and I'm just having so much fun doing that as well. And I think that I read some really amazing things. My hair's stuck. Okay, I think I read some pretty cool stuff this month, this month, I mean this reading vlog. And I'm excited to see what I get to next. I watched so many movies as well. And that was just fun. I love watching movies and TV shows, things like that. It just, they bring me so much joy. And so if you're watching, I would love for you to comment down below one of your favorite childhood movies. I know that we all probably have like 
20 plus favorite childhood movies, but just name one or two or three. Mm. Anyway, just put some of your favorite childhood movies down in the comment section. I would absolutely love to hear them. And I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you're at. And if you're not having an amazing day, just remember that tomorrow is a new day. And let's all try to remain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's pretty much all I have to say.